So when we left off in the last part, we were looking at how the soccer team uh, database might look based on the original rules. Uh, I'm going to add an extra rule now, and we're going to examine the whys and hows of that, and then we'll kind of take a couple more steps, and we'll look at how we might uh, enhance this database even more, depending on the requirements of the business. Um, now, in this case, the requirements we were given were fairly simplistic, but uh, as you'll see as we jump through the various um, iterations of this database, this can go from fairly simple to extremely complicated, or at least extremely complicated looking. All we're doing is actually breaking it down into simpler, smaller pieces. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to start tracking games as well. And a game happens between two teams. If you're familiar with sports, that means that we're having a versus match and we call one team the home team, one team the away team. Um, however, maybe we don't call it a home team and away team, we might call it team one and team two. Um, and it doesn't really matter what you call it. In this case, we're going to call it home team and away team. So what I did was I threw in a junction table for the team table. So this is one of those many-to-many -many recursive relationships. We're talking about two teams having a game with each other. This game um, has a start date, it has a score, and uh, the score is a per, on a per team basis at this point. However, you might also notice that um, we've got two relationships coming from the team table. One is for the home team, one's for the away team. Presumably we'll call the home team column uh, the home ID, and the away team column maybe we'll call it away ID. And we will basically have a link to two different teams for uh, each game. Uh, so we don't need to have an instance of this game record for both teams. We only need one record to store both of those teams in it. But this is a way where we can say one team hosts, if you will, being the home team, hosts another team for a game. Um, and Later on, we'll explore how to represent that using a create table statement and uh, how to query that data. For now, we're just going to leave it as is, and we're going to move on to kind of have a look at another possible step here. So step three, we're going to take it another step further, and instead of just storing game data um, ad hoc when games are finished, maybe we want to track specific points that each player scores on our game. So perhaps we want to have a table called points. Actually, point to follow our class conventions. And in each game, multiple points can be scored. Um, and let's change that here to our crow's foot. And oops, we want to change our line end. Our line end is actually already 16, but let's bring it up just a slight bit. Cause I'm pretty sure these others are at ah, 24, okay. So we want that to be at 24 to match the rest of our crow's foot on the diagram. All right, now in a game, many points are scored by many players. So a player can score many points over the whole season and potentially um, many times during uh, a given game. So we can store how many points each player scores. We don't really need to um, keep track of anything else at this point, um, but uh, we do need to consider our primary key. Now usually on a junction table our two decisions are as follows. We can either um, make our two foreign keys into a single primary key, meaning that we only have the same player scoring one time on the same game, or for the same game one player scores one time. Um, obviously we know the rules for sports are a little different and a player might score three, four, ten goals at the same uh, during the same game. They'll often score one goal at a time, but sometimes it's more. 
Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and copy this guy right here, this plus sign, and I'm going to paste it. And I'm going to paste it again. Okay. Um, if we did this, it would not be the best way to handle it. Um, handling it this way would result in us not having a uh, the ability for a player to score more than once. And we're not exactly going to say, okay, you put it in the net, but you scored already, so it doesn't count. Uh, so what we're going to do here instead, I'm just control zing away from that. I'm going to put in, um, instead of uh, having it based on player and game alone, uh, I'm going to put in uh, a point ID. Okay, so we can do that. That's one thing that'll work. Um, and it's not a terrible I way to go. I, I think I would. I think I'll be happy just to stick to this for right now. Uh, one other thing I might want to keep track of is what time the point was scored. So point um, game time. Um, if you're in soccer, maybe point game quarter. If it was hockey, it would be period. If it was another game, uh, you would have other um, potential words for it. I know it's quarter in basketball, soccer, American football. Uh, so whatever you um, prefer to, or whatever your sport um, criteria is, whatever your sport business rules are, you'd probably name that column based on that. So here I have a game quarter that's you know one, two, three, or four, and then uh, there's a time uh, within that quarter that the point was scored. So now we can track a specific instance in time. And we might make this into a four key primary key, but that's really killing it. We wouldn't want to do that normally. Um, so a point idea is just fine for this case. Um, now points are not scored just on goals alone. Sometimes points are scored as assists or as goals, meaning an assist is where um, a player might pass something or pass the ball or the puck over to the player that scores and they get a point for you know assisting with that goal so there's a couple of ways we could handle this we can go is assist or point is assist is the better way to follow our um, conventions and we'll again stretch out the table to fit the new column um, but that's not the best way to go about it and the reason for that is because we can also indicate it, which uh, point it is an assist for. So if an assist is a point and a goal is a point, then an assist should say, I am an assist for a particular goal. Um, so what we can do is instead of doing this point as assist here, which I highly um, recommend you do not, we move on to my step three here. And step three is, we have our quarter, we have our clock time. I called it game point when I got to here the other day. Um, and you can see what I did was I made a one-to-many recursive relationship, meaning each point has the potential to belong to another point, meaning that if a player assisted a goal, then they would have a reference back to that goal that they assisted. And now we know whether it's an assist or a goal. And we can do all kinds of querying easily on that data, as I will show you in a future video. Uh, for now, I think I'll stop here and we'll move on to the next step later on.